Good morning, good morning, people all over the world. Thank you so much for coming. This is Book It, the literary arm of What Is Story Say. And we're here with our fabulous uh, personality. I got to say personality, because she's that, all of that, and nuff, nuff, nuff. Mrs. Oh, Dion yeah. Glasgow Douglas. Welcome, Dion, to What Is Story Say. Thank you so much, Pauline. And good afternoon. It's afternoon where I am, and it's great to be here with you. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, it's morning here. I hope me to get tied up with this Hawaii story. Say, I'm oh, sorry, God, <laughs> Melody, too much. <laughs> it's so it's nice all story. Come yes, all is story. Now, um, we will formally begin this uh, program by talking to Dion about her book. First of all, let me tell you, for those of you who don't know Dion, let me tell you a few things about her and then I'm going to ask her to share something else. Now, Dion is Guyanese, I know. And she's mother, wife, sister, entrepreneur, philanthropist, um, storyteller, big yeah, woman, best friend, bosom friend for many, many people and more. She is a diehard Guyanese and she roots for her culture. So Dion, can you tell the people a little bit more about yourself? Because I only know so much about you. So share some things about yourself that they might not know. I think the most important thing is that I am on a journey to find, mm. like center myself again. I think when I came right. into this world, I came into a, a trauma filled world. There was so much trauma. I think it affected me. It affected my brain. So everything mm -hmm. that I do, I'm an avid gardener. Everything that I do mm -hmm. is to go on this journey of aligning mm -hmm. and centering myself again. The second thing is that I'm an empath. I really feel for people. Mm -hmm. For years, I didn't know how to be an empath with boundaries, but now I'm learning. So, you know, I'm getting <laughs> better. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, as you have said, and I'm going to reiterate, mm -hmm. I really love my culture, my heart is with mm -hmm. my culture. Yes. Um, you know, when you talk about the journey and empath, those are things that I align with as well. Because on the empath thing, have you ever had that? I don't know if in your childhood, you were moody and and always miserable. I don't know why you're miserable. Other people's stuff you're carrying. Did that happen to you? Yes, and I still, I still have, I feel a lot mm -hmm. and I feel mm -hmm. too much and I feel things that yes. I'm not supposed to feel. And I think that yeah. is why I have to write because yes. I can't have it sitting in my spirit. I have mm -hmm. to go through the process of right. getting it out of me because it affects me. But that is a battle that I've always had. And sometimes I have to tell myself, you know what? You don't have to carry that. You don't have to react to that. You don't have to put that on your spirit. And sometimes, yes. you know, I do that a lot. I'm getting better yeah. now to just like, yeah. let it go. It's not, you mm. know, no. I feel like sometimes it can be a burden because you're not even free because you're you're feeling that one over there. You're feeling that one. You're feeling that one. Then mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, no, it's too much. Too much yeah. sometimes. You're, you're, there's a whole show by itself. There's a whole show exactly. by itself because I can so relate to that. And there's so many things we can learn from that. So tell me, tell me about yes. school. Where did you go to school and things like that? Oh, so as I said, I had a very, um, I don't want to call it turbulent childhood, but mm -hmm. my journey started mm -hmm. in Linden. I went to Christian oh. work nursery school, but okay. because Linden holds so many traumatic experience for me, I don't really mm -hmm. see it as my point, my starting point. And that's why you mm -hmm. always hear me say I'm from Barbies because I went to I Barbies see. at five. And I think that's where okay. I come to consciousness and into knowing. And then mm -hmm. I went to Litchfield Primary School in Barbies. And on the first day when I was, when I took common entrance and I'm supposed to go to secondary school, my mother came and she brought mm -hmm. us to West Coast Demerara. So I went okay. to West Dem Secondary School, but that was not a great experience. So I went to Ashok mm -hmm. School and then Ashok closed down. And then I went to Mahasaba Secondary from Mahasaba okay. Secondary, 
I went into um, Cyril Potter College of Education from mm -hmm. Cyril Potter for a few years. I went to the University of Guyana and then I transferred mm -hmm. to calls in New York. So that was the right. meandering. Yes, but I'm grateful for the meandering. Yes, I am. Yeah, it, like you said, the journey. It's the journey. Yeah. And how about siblings? I, I came from um, a family where my father had children before marriage, then he yes. had, while he was married to my mother, he still has their children from the marriage and then their children outside of the marriage. And then, you know, so there is a lot because of that. All of these things actually bring additional, mm -hmm. additional things that you have to deal with other than right. the normal. It's almost like a normal childhood, but the ones that are, that are my mother's children, we mm -hmm. have a decent relationship. Right. Yes. Hmm. I see. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of people can relate to that. For those who are not Guyanese and may not understand the way our culture works or or social situations work, we have we have parents who got children before, they got children during the marriage, they got outside children as we call them. It's a Seem, I can say it's a norm in Guyana. It's not anything unusual to have. And sometimes yeah. we can have relationships with those children and all children have relationships or not. So not a unique thing. So thank you so much for that. Now, um, we want to get into you as an author. So what are some of the reasons that brought you to this book? Like this book is called Diaspora Musings. What brought you to this book and well, writing this book? Okay. Mm -hmm. So as I said, everything I feel, I have to make sense of it. If I don't, mm -hmm. then it remains in my system. And so yeah. I, I had just moved to the United States. I'm in this different world. The rules are mm -hmm. different. I am. I came from this culture where I was not yet fully conscious of myself, not yet mm -hmm. at a place where I I really, I didn't know who I was, you know, I was just on a whole different level. Going to America actually mm -hmm. brought me face to face with so many things, my identity, who I am as a woman, who I am as a mm -hmm. black woman, what is my mm -hmm. place in this world? What am I doing in this place? Oh, do I make sense of this place that I find myself mm -hmm. in? So all mm -hmm. of these things, they keep coming down on me and I would just sit and write and write and write. And that's all, all that I try to do is just make sense of mm -hmm. the situation that I find myself in. I'm mm -hmm. in the diaspora, I'm outside of my country and these are the mm -hmm. things that are going on in my head. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the name, Diaspora Musings, yes. Mm -hmm. So basically you were writing for yourself. Exactly. Exactly. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. when I, this is my dilemma, I'm writing for myself and then I feel, you know what? I don't want to share this because this is, this is like my personal journey and mm -hmm. I should not make other people, they should not become mm -hmm. aware of this. This is me. I don't want to bear myself to other people, mm -hmm. but then I yeah. realized that none of my stories are mine only. Oh my gosh. I understand that. Oh my gosh, you said something a friend and I was were talking about the other day and she was telling me the stories are not for you, they're for other people. She said that about two weeks ago. Um, when you talk about writing down these stories and writing them for yourself, now I studied writing and I would always mark up the books that they're giving students when they're writing. They say you're writing for an audience. I already I always mark it and say lie because I feel like writers write first for themselves. They say the yeah. first audience is the people. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't write that way. I'm writing for self. And then I might, you know, change it for other people. So you write on target there. I feel like I'm supported in this writing. Maybe because we're writing from such a place, very, very embodied. That's why it's like that. And then 
a lot of times too, when people write for the audience, they are inauthentic. They, they have this audience that they make up. So they want to polish up themselves to present it to the audience. But like what I hear you saying here is that you write from this deeper self, this searching, this longing for you to confront Dion, right? A lot of times mm -hmm. our writing wakes us up, you know? I say, whoa, where this coming from? And then now you give it to the people. That, how do you feel about the the energy with which you give it do you give it some downtime because i hear passion and trauma and conflict sometimes do you wh what do you do from here to there what does that look like from the so no, after you write it out what and I, it's give like, it. uh -huh. sorry yes yes continue mm -hmm. sorry no 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 i'm done okay yes it's like I have to, some of them, I just have to go through the pain of the labor pain. It's mm -hmm. already in there. I don't have to, mm -hmm. I just have to write it down. Some of mm -hmm. them I have to push out because once it comes on me and I'm impregnated mm -hmm. with the thought, it doesn't go away until it's out. And mm -hmm. once I get it out, once I get it out, it's like I can say, ah, yes. Yeah. I get it out <laughs> of me. And then once it's out of me, then it's ready to share. But when it's in me, mm -hmm. I'm uneasy. And um I can't I can't move. I can't move freely because right. it's, it's mm -hmm. there, it's bothering me, and I have to give mm -hmm. birth to it. And once it's birth, then I present mm -hmm. it. Yes. So it seems like you're you're giving me this. I'm seeing um germination yes then growth and not just a growth a growth that you can understand because you're a mother you're talking about pregnancy and birth mm -hmm. you know i don't speak in those terms because i don't have the experiences but you're speaking of it like that like this thing this entity like this germinate this germ and this germ is there it's got to get to its potential and you you put it through your body and you birth it and give it to the world wow yes powerful i like it and so uh viewers when you're watching this and writers do you um relate to this idea of how you birth ideas and put them in the world because many of you see dion on on facebook and youtube and everywhere and you hear her speak with passion do you know where her stories come from well this is a little bird's eye view into how she comes to tell her stories and why they have to be delivered the way they are and with what frequency and all the hows and whys and wherefores. So this is very, very good, Dion. So because I want people to see you, the author who creates. And this book was published in 2017. I remember I was in Guyana in 2017. Um, why 2017? I'm going to, before you get to that, I want to also remind you about this. You were on a thing called Periscope. For those who don't know, Periscope. <laughs> I never heard of this Periscope before because, you know, I'm deep in academic land and I'm quite sure what happened out there. And then I think my sister sent this thing to me and I'm watching, I'm watching you. I didn't see you, I could hear you. And you're walking by water and you're talking about this river, like, you know, like when, you know, in uh, afternoon, Saturday afternoon at church, you're going for nature walk. So I used to say, this should do this nature walk and she's talking and so on. I like the ideas you were sharing. And then you had this periscope coming on every now and then. And I keep thinking there's something you're saying, but you're not saying. And I keep thinking, what is it? I hear that struggle. I hear that thing. It resonates, but what? She not come out and talk the thing. She, she not coming out. What was it like? Yeah, so I'm asking you. <laughs> stop. You figure out yes, what I said. I think, what that, said. Um, he, I think that the person, mm -hmm. everything that happens, you have to come to the place of self-acceptance. Right. I have gone through... I'm telling you, I, I like to say that there was a part of my life when I was living so unconsciously, like 
Right. I don't even know how the world works. I didn't even, I wasn't even paying attention to, to my thoughts, to my feelings, to mm-hmm. how I see the world. Because I was caught up with, I was in so much in all the things that have happened mm-hmm. to me. And when right. I decided to go on a journey, like this growth journey, a journey of finding myself, mm-hmm a journey of accepting mm-hmm. who I am, all my stories. I mean, all my stories, the good, the bad, and the ones that came wrapped up in sandpaper. When I mm-hmm. decided to accept all the stories, mm-hmm. I think I became free. It freed yes. me. And that freedom allows me to share with yes. the wider audience. You know, in Guyana, we have a thing. When people know your story, they broadcast it. Mm-hmm. They think that they can tell other people your business, think they're talking your name. But when we come to the place where we accept ourselves, the thing is that I always say, I don't need to confront anybody about any story, finding and proving. Because guess what? We know the story better than anybody else. We Amen. know whatever transpire better than anybody else. Amen. So when you the story, yes. know. Because before, when you raised a certain way, you don't want people to know your business because they're going to talk your name and they're going to have this idea about you. But little do we know that they got the same story. Everybody get a story. Please. We never know that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there's nothing more beautiful than just freeing yourself and telling your stories. I'm telling you, it's, it's no longer, because some of our stories, they're shrouded in shame. You know, we, we, yes. we them, some of them are so totally wrapped up. And, you know, there are stories mm-hmm. that we have to keep some stories as stories in our vault and decide mm-hmm. who we share them with. But then the yes. stories that have the underlying principles that can help other people, the stories mm-hmm. that are the common stories and the shared experiences. I tell my stories. I tell mm-hmm. my heart stories so that nobody... Mm-hmm. Because there is no one else who can tell my stories for me. And it frees right. me to talk about, you know, the poverty, what I've gone through. It's, oh my gosh, it is the most freeing thing that I've ever done for myself. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, this thing is so freeing. <laughs> I wonder if I can say this, <laughs> this here. It's so freeing that you get say better orgasms when you tell your stories. <laughs> No, I mean that. Yeah. I mean that in the most, <laughs> in the most gentle way. I mean that you, you're a better wife. You're better everything mm-hmm. when you just decide. Just let it go. It's okay. Ladies, orgasmic. The yes, answer is oh. yes, mm-hmm. and those who know know, and those who know who know, pick axi mama. We might encounter it one day because in the journey, we move towards an enlightenment and knowing. Yes. And I don't know if the 50s bring this with to us. You know, when we entering that stage where we're coming to know and we don't care who know once we know. So, Yes. So, and I like what you said, you're judicious about what you share and when. Maybe Mm -hmm. what you keep for yourself and for close friends. Maybe, maybe one day you can make that what given to and give that to a wider audience. That's what I hear you say. So why are you in the Pan Periscope girl? Because I I think I came from, I really came from storytellers. My mm-hmm. father, I was talking to an older man who watches Our Story Got Melody, and he was telling me about my father. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, mm-hmm. you daddy could have tell a joke. You daddy <laughs> used to go down a crowd and tell a joke, y'all. And my mm-hmm. mother was a playwright in her own right. Yeah. She used to play yes. plays for the village, and she used to tell them. But really mm-hmm. and truly, why I tell stories is because I was really becoming afraid that mm-hmm. nobody's telling our stories. What's happening? Mm-hmm. Why aren't I? Why am I not seeing storytellers that look yeah. like me telling the yes. stories? And this thing was on my spirit. I can't. Mm-hmm. That's why when certain things you have to, when it lands on you, you have to push it out. 
or else it will land on someone else and that person will yeah. push it out. So I mm -hmm. couldn't, I, I, I'm always thinking about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, who's telling the stories? Who's telling this language? This language mm -hmm. that came out of the, what, what that my ancestors used to survive. Who's telling those stories? Yes. And then also, mm -hmm. people always used to say, oh, you're from Guyana. Oh, that's the Jim Jones tragedy. That <laughs> story. Guess what? I said, you know what? Yeah. That's not our only story. Precisely. We're not a single storied country. And if me telling right. my story, you telling your stories, those are just some of the stories. They're all, all mm -hmm. different stories, but I just felt that one, I wanted to mm -hmm. see how I can impact that narrative. Right. And two, it mm -hmm. was resting on my spirit. And when, when things rest on me, I had to write them or make it happen. Right. And that why makes I was much sense that makes so much sense um i i wasn't on facebook for a very long time but when i got on facebook i didn't see much queries on facebook and by the time certain speakers got on facebook people seem to get liberty for talk creoles this language yeah. that's maligned maligned and not even by other people by our own people they don't seem to understand that this is ours and it's birthed from that pain that pain, mm -hmm. that and the trauma of our people in order to survive is a tool they made. They made it. They made it, you know? And um, how many people make language? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what I also um, hear you talk about is how you carry the culture, how you, you bear this culture. And it's something that was born on your heart. Nobody gave it to you. It's that it came from the inside. And the things that are, motivated by an internal passion and a journey with the confluence of so many stories and, and experiences can only be given by certain people. Like they seem to be the thing that is given like a, like a, like you're a messenger. You're made to be a messenger, to carry this thing. Because look at what you're born into. You're born into playwright and storyteller. How are you gonna be anything else, girl? Exactly. And you know, that almost, you almost made me want to cry when you said that because really? I just, yes, because um, when I look at the journey and like mm -hmm. all of the experiences and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the abuses and everything else that happens, I used to ask myself in the early years when I was mm -hmm. unconscious, I used to ask myself like, why me? Why I couldn't yeah. get the light? We started off well, you know, we started off yes. well, but it's just that father didn't have a vision. And for a woman to mm -hmm. carry the children and still feel like she has to baby the man too, that's too much. That was too much for her yes. to bear. Mm -hmm. And now, oh my gosh, I accept all of my stories with gratitude because now mm -hmm. I see that it was really a preparation because I've lived right. in 90 with different people and that was that was the way of saying you know what i want you to have a multitude of perspectives and the only right. way i'm going to give you that is if i put you to get thrown from a live underneath it <laughs> there, live with the body and now i can accept all of it with gratitude mm -hmm. really i am grateful mm -hmm. for the journey yes yes so is a number of things you said. I don't know if you want to elaborate. We didn't get into this book yet, you know. Oh, jeez. I'm <laughs> talking about the, the author. You talk about moving from place to place. I know you have a book out. You say you live in 19 places. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's nomad. It's 19 houses. Yes. So 18 houses. Yeah, it's called um, 19 houses. 19 houses. Yes. So... You said you guys started out well and things broke down, broke down in the family. So you used to just go, how did you end up in these 19 houses? People taking you in, you're sent there, what? Because <laughs> I want people to get a little bird's eye view so you are going to go and buy the book when, you know, she's going to tell you about how to get a book. Yeah. Because I don't know anybody who live in 19 houses. I live in a few myself, but 19 yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I've lived in yeah. 21 this is the 20, wow. I'm sitting right now in house number 21. And house number 21 okay. has 21 rooms. And my husband say, he's doing that yes. because I have to come full circle. And that's why it's mm -hmm. 21. Yes. Mm -hmm. 21 rooms. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, 
It's like taking back, like I, you know, all that yeah. has happened. House number one was my parents trying to make life together. Right. But things broke down in house number one. And so mm -hmm. my father took us to his mother from Linden okay. to Bernice. And that I house see. had one room, 16 people. Jesus. So we were sleeping under the table in house number two. <laughs> my right. grandmother did not take care of all of us because mm -hmm. it was too much. It was really too yeah. much. And so she started giving mm -hmm. us to old people to go and keep old people company. We know the way. I know the yeah. way. And that's how we ended up in house number three. Uh -huh. And then my mother fought and get custody of us. And that's how we ended up mm -hmm. in house number four. Okay. House number four mm -hmm. was just like a, a resting place to get to house number five. That's when she brought us right. onto the west coast of Demerara. That was house mm -hmm. number five. But the relationship wasn't working out for us and for her. And mm -hmm. so she found someone else and she took us in house number six. But in house number six, we got put out because the relationship disintegrated and we went into house wow. number seven. House number seven was not really mm -hmm. a house. It was actually a lady mm -hmm. downstairs and we had to take salt back and actually board it up, use the salt back board and it, board uh -huh. it up and then make room with sheep. And that's how we ended right. up. That's how we did the house number seven. And then my uh -huh. mother asked for a sister to keep us and she kept us in house number eight. But my aunt okay. has had her family already. And so she, she couldn't do it all. And so she just right. put us in. And when she put us out, different people took us in. And that's how mm -hmm. I ended up, ended up in house number nine. And mm. from house number nine, I think I went to several parts of college. You see, for other people, they go to college and they're like, okay, they're just yes. staying there. That was my permanent residence when I was there. That was my permanent wow. residence. Residence, wow. Yes. And then from you live there, in dormitory. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was it. That was like a stable house for me. Yes. Right. And then from there, I live in Chapel Street Lodge. I think that's number 10, Chapel Street Lodge. Then I came back to the West Coast and I lived with an old man. I think that that might be 12. Sometimes I get confused. And then mm. from there, yeah. the guy, I think the guy was a little off because one day I was bathing in the bathroom. He came mm. to the door. So and then something happened and then they put us out and that's how I ended up in number 12, I think 12 mm -hmm. or 13 with the old lady. And mm -hmm. she kept me there. And after she mm -hmm. kept me there, we were able to get a house together as siblings. Mm -hmm. right. That was number 14, I know 14, 14, I think, yes. But then the people wanted to rebuild their house. So they tell us we have to move. And Jeez. um my brothers went somewhere else, but I didn't want to go. So I went and lived in, somebody used to keep goat in there downstairs. And I asked them if I could rent it. And they said, if I wash it out, if I clean it out, I can live there. I spent like wow. a week just fluid in that place, clean out that place to live Gosh. in there. When, after I lived in there for two weeks, they said that data coming in and they need the place. So then I you didn't go pen? The gold pen, all yes. This, the gold. All this time, then get them gold pen, then I know for leave day. Oh, nope. my mama. Well, when they wow. put me out from there, that is when, that's the only time in my life when I thought that suicide was a solution. The Ooh, only time. I'm so sorry. Because it was too much. It was too much. Oh, my God. I, like, I couldn't take any more. I could not take yes. any more. It was oh, really... Good. Yes, and that's you just when... telling me make me weary. You exactly. just telling me make me tired. Oh my god. Can gosh. you imagine? And then I was mm -hmm. taken by these Indian people and I lived with them for mm -hmm. like nine months. And then I got a place to rent. And I lived in um I went and I rented this place and I lived there. And then I worked, I taught in the day and I made cards in the night. Like I, I do mm -hmm. art. So I make cards mm -hmm. in the night, like four day cards and different for people and so on. And I built my first house and I move into it without electricity, without anything. I just move in. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Whew, Dion. It yes. is this. So, right there is so many. That, things. I'm writing that. I'm currently writing that. Yeah. 
so many things go through my mind. You know, we I don't think I've ever associated Guyana with homelessness this way. Hmm. But it's there, it's there. And the kind of risks and vulnerability that brings oh because yeah. a young girl with these mm -hmm. letters out there, you know, I I know what you're talking about. I was a exactly. grown woman. Exactly. Woman. So every house came with its own yeah. experiences, its own yes, experiences, yes. its own mm. kind of abuse, it's everything. Yes, they all came with like mm -hmm. different things. Yes. Some of it I, I felt only like to a couple. It to be like an out of body experience. Like I wish that my reality wasn't my reality. Right. And some of them. But that's my journey, and I'm really grateful. Mm. Hats off to you. That's a lot to take in. A lot to take in. I remember moving one time, one of my moves, and was with some friends. Mm -hmm. And I was in the bedroom, and I feel like somebody watching me. I feel. I don't know. And then I know the bedroom had a crease, but I looked at the crease and I see no light. So I said, it's just mine of a matter. And then something else happened. And then I decided to go and look at the crease again. And there was light. Mm -hmm. A big man been over there. A crease me. Those are the kinds of things that yes. you get exposed to when you move from house to house and even your own house, you got other issues. So we're waiting for the book. We're waiting for the book. We'll support yeah. you on the journey because you tell that story. You write them, me go read them. So that's mm -hmm. why we're here today to let us know that we can accompany each other on that journey. It's a very moving story. I, I know you, but I didn't know that story at all. So um, true. Dion the philanthropist and so many things. I knew of you before I met you. And I knew of you because my sister Dane keeps saying, you gotta meet the eye, you gotta meet the eye, you gotta meet the eye. Who is this the eye anyway? The same thing too. <laughs> so years passed. I only met once. We only met once. I remember a couple of years ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So like that. And but what what come came full circle? She, my sister sent her daughter to Guyana with you. She didn't get her own picnic. She sent Guyana with you. So when she sent this to the daughter, I said, but who you sending your daughter with? It's stranger. She said, ah, Diana is good people. So that kid went to Guyana and she had all these experiences. You know, she was going to, told me she was going to teach music in this school and she was going to teach Spanish in this school. I'm like, Oh, you go to Guyana school to teach Spanish and music. It's a little picnic. So, but Diane just take her children there. So I'm like, oh, interesting. And then my niece had an experience which I never forget because she, you took her to Buxton to find her people. And when my father saw her, he was amazed. He said, how oh, you find me? So thank you for that mm -hmm. story because I know. And the reason she was able to find her people because she knew a story. She knew our story and the village knew our story when our house burned down and they were able yes. to tell and that's her. that's the story we used. Yes. Yes. So you see, mate, got to tell your children your story. If my sister yes. never told my niece that story, she couldn't find her grandfather. And he said, oh, you will find me a little American picnic. Find me. So thank you for that. Yes. Because I say, when we tell our stories, our children will find their way home if they want Amen. to. Yes. So what's it you been doing with this? I think it's philanthropy. What you, what you been doing with carrying these children to school, to, to, to teach and so? Then there's a 10 year old or less. Exactly. But you see, the thing is, they have a perspective that the children here do not have. And so yes. it was not just, it was not just, it's giving them that sense to see that, you know what? There is something I can do. I can be, yes. I can change. Things. even at my young age I can be a change agent I wanted them yes. to have that I also want them to have the dual perspective of seeing what they have in the U.S. and what life is yes. like here for people 
and also because of the way I grew up, I really mm -hmm. wanted, like I always gravitate towards those who are in situations like mine. Like I feel like when I see them, I see myself. So I always mm -hmm. have to help that group. I always see myself in, in children mm -hmm. who have similar upbringing like me or going through that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was a beautiful experience, both for them and for these children. And I believe that a child can teach whatever they know. And that's what I tell them. Whatever you know, yes. that's what you're teaching. Teach. Mm -hmm. exactly and that's how we did it and she was there she was teaching in the classroom and doing everything mm -hmm. yes little picnic and then she called when she said to me auntie pauline Guyanese people are very honest and kind i said what do you mean they're honest she said they said kayla kayla your hair and looking good and so <laughs> i said what do you mean she said in america they tell your hair look good and then guys people say come kayla girl your hair and looking good <laughs> Yes, let me plug it, let me fix it up for you. Yes. Yes, that, that's Guyanese for you. And I love that she, liked, she had that experience. So thank you very much for that. Now, yes. you've been talking about writing and we talk about Spanish and so on. So you speak a number of languages. So Dion is a polyglot. People is a polyglot. She's not a, she, well, a linguist is not a person who speaks many languages. A linguist is a person who speak, who, who studies the, scientific, the science of language. But Dion is a yes. polyglot. Tell us that language story because it, it, it's important because of the book we are going to look at just now. Yes. Yeah, so I remember I was about 25 years old and I said, one of my mother's dream, my mother was a teacher, but I feel like she never get to fully live her life. Mm -hmm. And so she always used to like put that on me. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you have to carry this dream that, I was not able to give birth to. And mm -hmm. I was about 25 and I said, you know what? I had one at West Ham. I only spent, I spent one semester at West Ham. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. had a Spanish teacher there. And she used to have us singing. And that woman stayed with me. And when I became, I never took any Spanish or anything in high school after that, just that mm -hmm. one semester. Right. And I tell myself, I said, at 25, I said, I am going to teach myself languages. Right. So I got a big Spanish textbook. And if I'm going to the post office and I have to wait in line, I am mentally just doing the pages of that book. I'm just doing mm -hmm. that book. I'm going through every single exercise. Mm -hmm. And I finished that book. And then I went to... Well, I think the story started because I said, I want to do languages at university. So okay. I asked myself, what's the first step? I can't do languages if I don't know any language. No one language precisely. <laughs> what I did was I taught myself and then I went and I wrote. At 27, I wrote CXC Spanish and French. The French story, I won a trip to Panama through the Adventist church and I met right. a woman who was a French speaker. And we made a plan mm -hmm. that if I taught her English, she would teach me French. And so mm -hmm. we corresponded and she taught me French. So I was able to write Spanish and French. Mm -hmm. And then I applied for University of Guyana. So when I went to university, I had to start from the bottom 101, one, you know. And I <laughs> yes, that's what I did to it, yeah. I did, I did three years, majoring Spanish and French. And then I mm -hmm. continued at... Um, SUNY New Pauls, but I am self-taught. Mm -hmm. And then I did my master's in Spanish, but mm -hmm. I taught myself. That's where it started. So cool. So cool. And of course, we got the Creoles, but some people think the language, but when you have a, a handle on languages, you get to understand how your own language is composed and all the richness and beauty of that. So thank you for that. Ah, I don't know what the people are saying on Facebook and so. Yeah. Let me see. I can't. I can't check it. This can't check it afterwards. And check it, it after. Too. Sometimes Marlies mm -hmm. can check and tell me if they're asking any questions or anything like that. So, okay. um, when the book came out, how how was it received? In did it meet your expectations, mm -hmm. or you didn't have an expectation about that? Well, the thing is, I don't know why at the beginning I was not 
Like I didn't want people to read them, read the read the poems. <laughs> Can you believe right that? Right to say that, but I wasn't ready for people to read the story, especially the story. Mar Marley said no questions yet. Thank you, Marley. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want people to read some of them like Child of Sorrow, you know, yeah. because that's me. That's that was my years walking through life. Like there's this child yeah. of sorrow. And so mm -hmm. I never used to say anything about it. Can you believe that? And you wow. can't do something I believe. without marketing. Marketing is crucial, but I'm just I believe. That thing. And then I decided that I have to start sharing and telling people. And when people read, you know, as people start reading, they will mm -hmm. give me feedback. Like, wow, I really feel this. I can, I can relate to this. I really feel this. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, somebody said, Marilyn Lord. Latimer said, Lord have mercy. I can relate to the suicide part. Not so many houses though. Mm -hmm. We are carrying traumas. Thank you so much. Yeah, we can bear each other's burdens when we carry the stories. And we can yeah. now have empathy and look out for other people. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, I identify with you saying you don't want people to read the stories. <laughs> you know, I have books written that I haven't published yet. I'm <laughs> sitting on them. They're not ready yet. They're not re you got to give it when it's ready. But I identify with that. And many writers would identify with that. This is book eight. We're talking books here. How we relate to books. So we write books. Um, Child of Sorrow or The Sorrows. You, you want us to read that one? Yes, you can, you can read yeah, it. Let me see. Let me get it up. Yeah. That darkness creeps and follows you. Hey, hey. let me get, I, I, I get in it. It's very skin of it. Which one is that? I'm looking for it. Okay. I'm looking for the poem, people. Yeah. Because I got Tom through the book. Is younger is death past younger self or or before? Yeah, go to younger self. I think that's the name. Go to younger self. Oh. Okay. To my younger self. Darkness creeps and follows you in its eyes. In, it is in your eyes. It is in your dreams. It has knocked you out of your self-esteem. Child of sorrow, I see in you. What could have been a you renewed? Child of sorrow, I plead with thee. Release the darkness. Set yourself free. Oh. Oh my God, you're reading my own poem and you're bringing me to tears. To my younger self. Ha. Huh. Somebody yeah. said that on social media just the other day that girl wrote. When her story came out, she said, I have a place where my younger self can rest. And talking about the Diddy story. Yes. Wow. I feel for her because she nobody now hear she when she's talking. And not to blame. Release the darkness that creeps on you. Thank you for this story. It's going to go all day. Done with the hiding. Done with the hiding. <laughs> Hopeland. Their wet eyes soaked my sadness. I walked away. The up the, Sorry. I walked away the fortunate happy one. The prize. Coveted American visa protected, clutching $200, my hope for love and healing, embarked the long-awaited journey. God bless America. Hallelujah. Amen. 32 years evaporated in a single blue suitcase. Laughter, fear, hardship, job, friends, life. My cocoon of an insular reality expanding. God bless America. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I climbed the steps of hope and excitement. Farewell. Good night. Welcome. Good morning. A sea of concrete, electrifying brightness, blinded my former darkness. They clapped. We've landed. God bless America. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. <laughs> so you left hopelessness to go to hope. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> How may you get to hope no happen? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, then you have it to read up. <laughs> the American Dream. Yes. If you read the American Dream, that really makes me yes. understand. The, the, the dream or <laughs> wait, my <I'll> watch it. <laughs> hmm. Let me see. Wait there. Like that one forward. I got to swipe. People okay. get this book. This book nice. And we're talking about diaspora musings. Twas dreaming. God, you're doing Shakespeare, yeah, yeah. Twas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what I wanted you to read is the American dream. That one is also about, you know, getting coming to reality too. Dream of paradise. Well, the American. American oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. American dream earth. Hmm. American dream earth. She came to us in stilettos, manicures, fancy hair weaves and fraps, rented car, foreign food galore, merriment and envy overflowed. Her well-earned two weeks vacation from America, flaunting her Yankee accent and indiscernible Caribbean-ness. Now her toes scorned all too familiar common mud. Her wardrobe, a blur of manicures and the dizziness of the ever-changing dress, carefully protecting the tag for its return to America. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we came to her and then we saw it took two jobs and disrespect, credit cards and disrespect, no rent sometimes and disrespect invisibility and disrespect to make her American dream come true. Yeah. Are you story this girl? Or Not other all of it, but it's, the, it's yeah. the stories of some of the people that I see in the mm -hmm. US. Yes. Like yes. they would come home and I would be like, wow. But when I went there and I see how certain people were mm -hmm. living, I see them. Then I under, I really, really, really understand what it takes to come yes. to Guyana and flaunt the American dreams for some of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. You had me when I said the tag. I keep the tag for carry back the clothes. You mm -hmm. know, when I went to America first, I didn't know you could do that. Really? We would buy, <laughs> my, yeah, my sister would carry me to New York and we would buy clothes. And I said, but I don't sure this one. I like them. She said, I'll oh, be carried back. I said, no, oh, carry it back. We don't wear it. Put it on. She said, oh, you can carry it back. So we go we try it on. We even wear it at church and say, I'm not like this. Carry it back. You can do yep. that. You can carry home the clothes. When you talk about the dizzying changes, you know, people used to come home from abroad and they're always changing this different outfit, this different yes. outfit. I'm never going to understand this whole thing. But we don't understand that it's just their two weeks of summer. And all the time exactly. they work, they never get time to wear the clothes they have. Exactly. Wow. So you write the experiences. I had to come to this little lighter one so that you stop right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this, it is so reminiscent of the experiences of the immigrant. Um, uh -huh. We did Hopeland. Did we do Hopeland? Yes, Hopeland. Yes, we did. Yes. No, um, I have yeah. one there for my mother, but that one might be a little yes. too no 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 i liked it um and i have a a, a, a question for you um so on so i'm going to read for my mother because this is the mother's day month i was hoping to do more for mother's day but a lot of things happened in this month so i couldn't for my mother for my mama a tear escaped my eyes today mama who walked away from all she built crumbled into ashes, who stitched together her life with hardships, dreams, bags of nothing, hope, and hard work.
to garner a menial ex existence. With sore fingers, she spent minutes on hours, on days, on her quest for meaning in visionless men and marriages. Then built her life on broken dreams, silent screams, and fractured themes. At the end, she stood alone and sang, Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Y'all? Mm. Oh, it seems yeah. like she I had her own her. story. Like she had her own story. When you use words like screams and mm -hmm. fractured themes, I get the sense she was abused herself. Yeah. Yes, she was. Yes. Mm. Yes. And you had to witness that or to know that. You had to know that. So, mm -hmm. you know, our identities are built in certain ways. I, I read this woman, Gloria Anzaldúa. She wrote a book called Borderlands. Mm -hmm. And she said identities are negotiated at borders. And I could see hmm. borders. The physical yes. border of Guyana, the, the borders of America, the borders and the experiences you've had. Yes. And I have a different take on that too, because I see how educators' identities are built in certain ways. And we want to see this Dion who's out there educating people, see her, see her story. And just take it, you know, she's going, give, 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 ha, ha, ha. Yeah, she's more than give, 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 ha, ha, ha. <laughs> the woman got experiences and deep ones that we can relate to. So I'm looking at how we negotiate our identities. I say negotiate because we just don't take them on and wear them. We use them to make yeah. other stories, to write them into books, to educate mm -hmm. other people. And if they come from the deep knowing and the experiential place, they go out into the world to resonate with its people. Exactly. We're going to find. You see, you said something, you, you, something, you hide the book. But I had to come to a realization that I can't hide the book because somebody tell me, you write, when you get the vision to write, you don't, it's not your business to read. Your job is to write. So please give yeah. them book this year because it's your job to write. You don't have to care who it goes to. It will find its people. Exactly. This book might not be a bestseller, but if it find 10 people, it find its own people, it find a tribe. So people, yes. it's $4.99, it's cheap. Mm -hmm. Four ninety nine. go and buy the book. Buy one for yourself, buy one for your friend, buy one for your neighbor, buy one Thank for you. a child. Yes, I appreciate it. Thank and you get so much. You're welcome. All the children got tablets. They can read from tablets. If you don't know how to buy it, ask a young person to help you so they can put it down on the tablet and get it. It's a nice read. It takes you places. And when you write poetry, I want to offer this. Some people say, I'm going to like poetry. Poetry are stories. Everybody mm -hmm. likes story. Read it like story. And yes. then you sit with it. You sit with it. The children who get it, they will get it at a child's level. The yes. adults who get it will get it at an adult level. When the children grow a little bit more, they can revisit it and they will get the deeper import. So don't worry that, you know, it gets adult teams. They grow up one day and some of them have more experiences than you think they can relate. So that that's true. my message to the audience. Yeah. So... You get love story in here and you get some other stories. Let me read what one person wants to know. Um, I'm trying to get the question. So um, Dr. Melva Persico, she, she was a teacher, right? Mel. Yes. She said, could you explain 
why you chose to use a picture of your daughter with the umbrella to shelter. As a matter of fact, the broken umbrella. That was a bold move. The cover get a woman, a young woman with a broken umbrella. She want to know why. I want to know too. Okay. Because I think that my stories are not um, these stories that are all just beautiful stories. And right. I think my daughter represents the fact that, you know, she, the stories are, okay, the, the stories of perfection, the stories that are beautiful, the stories that mm -hmm. are going to just go out there. But the broken umbrella is the experiences mm -hmm. that I've had. That okay. don't matter how I try to cover them, mm -hmm. sometime it will be exposed because the umbrella is broken. Yes. Right. The thing that I, and so, it's also for me, it's also a way of letting my full self be seen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you were thinking of the cover, you just say, ha, ha I'm going to get the broken umbrella. How that came about? <laughs> no, I sat and I thought about it. And then I was thinking about this picture and I'm thinking about how we use the umbrella to shade ourselves from mm -hmm. you know different thing rain sun all and the so elements mm -hmm. but then i didn't get that shade mm -hmm. all wow. the time i didn't get that shade mm -hmm. and because i didn't get that shade it's not that the shade wasn't allowed but the umbrella mm -hmm. the umbrella the different umbrellas that i was covered with they were not yeah. always strong and good umbrellas and i mm -hmm. i say that i don't judge them However, mm -hmm. the umbrella came and sheltered me, I accept it. And I think right. my daughter is, is accepting that too. Yes. The umbrellas were broken and it's okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Because in our brokenness, we still have purpose. Yes. Amen. So yeah. to my friend who talked about relating to suicide, I want to speak directly to you. What's her name? I want to get her name. Mm. Marlene. Marlene, in your brokenness, you are worthy because in that brokenness, you shelter someone. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for Dion, you took your brokenness and you still mother your child. Amen. Yes. Yeah. And in that brokenness, she will find strength and power. I, I mm -hmm. offer you this. When I was living in Palau in the Pacific, I was teaching there. There was a young girl who was going to get married to a prominent, the son of a prominent businessman, Seventh-day Adventist businessman. And she was young, maybe 23 years so or whatever. And people kept saying to her, um, kept saying to her, what if you, you marry so early? What if it break up? And you know what she said? And I never forget this. And it liberated me. She said, my mother divorced her first husband. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, no shame. Not that she was going into it saying that she wanted it not to work, but she had a fearlessness of the institution she's walking into because my mother passed through it. And her mother had married the paramount chief, paramount and the, the, the marriage dissolved. She had a knowing. So when we tell our stories, I would submit, we, we mm -hmm. empower our women, our men, our boys and girls to walk through the world knowing that they can do it too. They can do it yes. too. Yes, indeed. I saw a comment coming. From Marlies. Um, she yeah. Said, yeah, from Marlies. Through broken, let me see. I gotta get my glasses. Where the glasses? Man. Something she said. Anybody can read it? Who can read it? You can read it, Dion? No, I don't know if I'll be able to see it. See. Okay. All right. Um, it says, through her brokenness is where the most beautiful light shines out to, to guide others. Yes. Mm -hmm. I yeah. believe that. Thank you, Marlies. Yeah. That's the truth. And Marlies herself had written a piece that I really, really love. And Marlies, you got to come on what the stories. I have to talk a little bit more about that thing when you're ready. Yes. He said, girl, that veil ain't yours. That veil ain't yours. Take it off. Yeah. 
So that's what Mel wanted to know. She said, I notice you use all caps when you start your poetry. Why is that? Just for chance? No, there was a, I kind of look, wait, let me see what was the reason. I think it's, um, it has to do with the, the roughness. I think growth, growth. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. from rough and then it's like a growth into myself, my right. journey. I'm rough, but then as I tell my stories, as I, I'm softening, the more authentic I become, I think I become softer. Okay. Yeah, somebody's calling me on the phone. You can't call me on the phone now. I'm live. Yeah. So um, she said, I'm intrigued by the title of the poem, Q. Me too. He said she thinks she <laughs> understands, but she wonders, would you care to explain? What is Q? Because I'm going to read Q to the people. What is Q? Well, if you see Q, you will know it. There, were, there are questions well, that... Hold on. Read, read Q. <laughs> You. Let me read you. This this thing get letters. This thing get words. You get all kind of thing. Q Q. Yeah. Where is it? Q. It has Q question mark. Today my cousin revealed to me some non remembered things. My life when five or six, standing alone under the bottom house, trembling in pain. And my eyes welled and overflowed. Detached from my own memory, I wept for every girl, defeated by pain lingering, overwhelmed by other created circumstances. I wept for every girl, lost, underestimated, insulted, abused, a witness to cruelty, my younger void self. I tell me, I cry again. I cry, I cry again. Yeah. I'm telling you, because you see, because I write, it's, it's like my life. You understand? So when it comes from yeah. within, it's not just mm -hmm. tears. If I'm in alignment with the poem and I'm feeling it, right? And I'm, mm -hmm. I am. My brain doesn't know that mm -hmm. it's a different it's time, fast. and I'm just right. You know, my brain is thinking I'm having the experience, so. That's wow. what's happening. So tears per se, but it's just the fact that when I'm in alignment with what's happening, one of the ways mm. that my emotions show is through flowing. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, those are so questions. It's... Like, I wish I had questions for my younger self, but I can't even right. remember questions. So I can't yes. even write the word question. And that's why right. I just wrote the two. You. Yeah, I get this. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of, tr it's triggering, but um, I think there's uh -huh, some, yeah, catharsis here because tears have a way of washing and healing. Exactly, yes. And it's catharsis, it's, it's, catharsis. It's, it's, catharsis. Yeah, and I, 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 I sit in it, it's okay, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So Mel, you had to go ask that. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you what else she asked or what she had to say because I wanted to ask you to like I asked you what did people when they read the book what they had to say and um, this is what uh, Melva Persico said Dion Glasgow Douglas Diaspora Musings is a collection that I read in one sitting and had me longing for more. Me too. I said, wait, the book done so? The book done so. They got more here, right? As I reflect on the poems in this collection, these are some of the descriptive words and phrases I could attribute to them. Visual, lyrical, rhythmical, filled with vibrant imagery, poignant, candid. Although entitled Diaspora Musings, this collection does not only treat the immigrant experience, it also reflects on the life experiences as stated in its subtle um, um, subtitle, it, no, sorry, on its subtitle, Poems of Growth, Learning and Losing. Mm -hmm. 
The poet successfully captures the reality of the immigrant psyche in poems like Longings, Twas Dreaming, Hopeland, The American Dream Earth, and The Return. She also reflects on the experiences of others that cross her paths and engendered youth in her. A poem like Carol does not does just that. I'm sure we all could name a few Carls and Carls. Dion also adopts the position of the writer who reflects on and writes about the process of writing in processings and the unwritten lines that she becomes an advocate for the voiceless in response. A response is the name of the poem. I yes. thoroughly enjoy this collection and I look forward to more beautiful poetry from the pen of Dion Glasgow Douglas. Congratulations, Dion. Well done. Thank you, miss. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Carol, that, Carol, that... Tell you, Carol was a girl in the same village. Yes. yes. Really? And when I yes. read her story, oh boy, man. Ah. Yeah, man. So if you want to hear about Carol, please go buy the book. Yeah. It's a thing. Yeah. But I read one on what is Teresa yesterday. I like that one. Um, because in all of this craziness, there's good times. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, da, 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 da. Back to the book. Yeah. I think it's longings. Yeah, longings. Oh, gosh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's me right there. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, say, uh -huh. I said, that's when me I'm right home. there. Yes, when you're not home. Because, you know, you're in when you're in the diaspora, you kind of think of home. Some people say we romanticize home. That, be it as it may, is still our connection. So, so yep. here... I don't know if I agree with that entirely, but that's what they say. So, longings. I long for windy days, salt hair brushing my cheeks, pregnant with moisture, curtains, not afraid to dance while in the breeze, kitchen garden, greens, fried corail, dal drone rice, delicious. Days not too hot, just enough. Bottom houses. Fishing without laws, zooming over the Demerara as people in speedboats, overflowing. Flowers that do not wait for spring, picnicking under humongous trees with nieces, running from the drag line through freshly dug mud, warm mud. Girl, that one, that one put me back in small days. Yes. Watching 10 feet high waves crack the sturdy concrete barriers. I long for people who say this and that. I'd be like, I'll get you. Uh, uh, huh? It's, no, put it on. No, put it on. Turn on this one. Okay. I don't know. Are you there? Oh, no. She had turned off. Am I going to play yeah. with the light? Am I going to play with the light? <laughs> no, someone has turned off the light. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought okay, it was it says. Me too. <laughs> Watching 10 feet high waves crack the sturdy concrete barriers. I long for people who say this and that. But be the stone dog. Long time to see. To eat a war till the string gets stuck between my teeth. And a decent ripe mango. Dripping juice down my elbow. Cricket. Border and unending dearest things. Close to my heart. Now so far away. But this will suffice. I clasp. Close to my heart, all the dearest, sweetest memories. I'll sail them through my thoughts slowly to keep their vividness so wet. Mm. Kitchen garden yes. greens. Yes, girl. And you're still mm. planting. You see, the thing is, it when we that for we planting the garden, we want to eat corilla. I put on corilla the other day. Yes. Yes. You see that? Yeah, you got to get to Corilla. <laughs> of all things a Corilla we want. A Corilla bitter. Hmm. It's true, but it's home. I guess, you know, there is this, what is home? There's this, what is home? 
what is Guyana? My Guyana, I'm sitting yeah. in my Guyana right now. My Guyana might be different right. to the other person Guyana. But Guyana for mm -hmm. me is my garden, being here, interacting with the world when I want to, when I need to. And yes. I create the Guyana I want in my mind and try to yes. live that, you know? So true. Ah, you know, I never thought about that. We're creating the Guyana we want. Huh. Mm, I like that one. I never thought about it that way. When I dig in and plant in and so I never thought I'm creating that. But it makes sense. So, my people, I think this is a good note to end on. Given that this is Independence Day in Guyana and we're creating the Guyana we want abroad by the little things, gardening and telling our stories. So any words you want to give to the audience before we close, Dion? Because they're busy somewhere else, having a good time. <laughs> yeah, man, that's okay. That's okay, yeah. Words. So any closing words for the audience? What would you like them to take away? I, yes, I want to say that, um, so many of us, we have stories mm -hmm. inside of us. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes we think that I don't want to, I want to write. There are many people who say, you know what? I could write a book. If I should mm -hmm. start talking about me life, <laughs> I could write a book. Mm -hmm. I would say stop putting, stop coding and just write mm -hmm. the book. Because what mm -hmm. stories do, what they do for you is not just the act of writing. What you're yes. doing also is, me personally, is healing. With every mm -hmm. poem, every story, I'm healing myself. And mm -hmm. I would say, especially since so many of us who grew up in Guyana, we have gone through so much. Mm -hmm. Stories can help us to find that alignment. It can help us with the trauma brains that we live with. And I'm now trying mm -hmm. to understand my own trauma brain. That, mm -hmm. But I think it's so important to or write your stories. Don't say you could write it, write them. Because when, when mm -hmm. you write your stories, when I write my stories, I'm not just even writing for me. I'm writing for mm -hmm. my children. I'm writing for those grandchildren yet unseen. And it's a yes. legacy that I'm giving to those who mm -hmm. come after me to say, you know what? This is what I was. This is what I, I came into this world intact. And then I had all these experiences. And then this mm -hmm. is my way, my writing of trying to realize mm -hmm. myself again. And you mm -hmm. give that, I think it's such a precious gift that when they themselves come into the world and they have experiences that throw them off, they can remember, you know what? There was someone in my life. I'm going to go back and read how they were able to align themselves after all of these experiences. I think it's mm -hmm. crucial that we write. When we write, we are saving generations. We are telling our stories. We are saying, I am not going to be forgotten. I'm not going to allow my culture to be forgotten. I'm not going to allow the stories of my parents to be forgotten. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's so crucial that we write yeah. our stories. Yes. So thank you for that. So where, where can we find your books and where can we find you on social media? Give us all your handles and your books and so on. Yes. So you can find my books on Amazon Kindle and I'm writing one now that I really am telling you, whew, it's like, oh, I have to get yeah. for every house, I have to get everything. Like some, something is telling me, make sure you clean every house. When you finish, yes. go in every <laughs> nook. My mom used to like say nook and cranny. Make sure that you mm -hmm. go into every nook and cranny of your memory mm -hmm. and take out all the stories. And you'll be able to find all of these on Amazon Kindle. I am on Facebook as Awi Story Got Melody, on YouTube and on Instagram as Awi Story Got Melody. Also, mm -hmm. you can find I love gardening, and gardening is also a part of my healing. It's a mm -hmm. part of, and this is like studies have shown that gardening helps you if you've gone yes. through a lot of trauma. It helps with your healing. So I have, um, I have a gardening page also called um, Cadence Garden at Westside, which is dedicated yeah. to a child I lost in stillbirth. And I also have a YouTube with Cadence Garden at Westside. 
And I also believe in education. So I have a Facebook called Westside Leadership Academy. And that's where mm -hmm. I teach uh, children. We teach children to read and we teach them some basic math skills and so on using all outdoor learning because mm -hmm. that is also on me. The fact when I come and mm -hmm. I see children can't read and I know what that will look like in 10 or 20 years when they become an adult mm -hmm. and they can't navigate the world, you know, with confidence. So that's something important mm -hmm. that can be found on Facebook too. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for that. I didn't know about the um, Caden Academy. Westside Academy and some of the other things. So please go check them out. I'm going to check them out myself. Please do that. Um, thank you so much, Dion. Um, Lynette Roberts said, when she was in Guyana, she planted, and now her nephew is sharing with friends because it's too much for them. You see, this this thing is catching on. And um, uh, Marlin said, I, I want to relate our Creoles and its teachings to everyday life but don't know how to do that. Any thoughts for her? Yes, I think that um, one of the things that you do is, we, we don't have to, she doesn't have to look far. We have mm -hmm. proverbs. And proverbs yes. are really life lessons mm -hmm. that are principles that just doesn't apply. They, they are borderless. They're not just for us. Mm -hmm. dining. We'll start with a proverb. Mm -hmm. Start with one one dotty build down. And let people know mm -hmm. that that really is life. You know, whatever you want to mm -hmm. do, whatever you are, to get to the next level, you have to go one step mm -hmm. at a time. Start with a come, yeah. and then tell mm -hmm. tell them what that means. But you have the proper. Yeah. You're not starting from ground zero. Right. Um, also, Marlene, I have a book called, uh, where is it? If you want to know how to start, you need a help. I have a book out there. Where is it? Somewhere here. Um, it's called Afro-Caribbean Proverbs. It has Guyanese Proverbs and Proverbs from all around the Caribbean. I'm trying to look for it. I can't find it on this thing here. Oh, yes, they're here. I have two volumes. This one is called Whispers in Our Ears. And this one takes you to the, some stories. And I show you how to do it. It's a journal. So I I used the story that my I had an encounter with my auntie. And um, she used to say, what they ahead, I drop a shoulder. Well, me didn't understand that till I was talking to a boy. And she tell me that. And then I find out what, what was it. So I wrote it, the, the proverb, and I have the meaning, and I have a story here as an example. So they get so many of them here that you can relate to. You can go through one a week and write down your thoughts. And I, when I made this book here, what came to me is that for people like you, because I had the same experience, how do I tell my story in my words, on my own terms, to people who might be looking for me one day? Because I went looking for our women and our people, and I couldn't find them in books, in their own words, in Creole. Yeah. So when I find them, I find them in the Proverbs, and I decide now to write to them. And so I have a friend named Ozzy from St. Vincent, St. Vincent Kitts, I think. And he and I would talk every week and uh, we just talking in Proverbs and thing. And then I said, you know what? Let me just put them down. So, and all these Proverbs, like I tell you, they're hilarious. But you will recognize almost all of these because we use them. And then there's a second volume called Encounters. And in Encounters, you get the man, they planting a the thing and he building a dam. One, one dot, he build dam. I tell you, this is a principle and a philosophy. Listen, that thing bring me house. It give me education. It give me all kind of thing. I, we got thing. So you can get this one on Amazon as well. And you, it has proverbs and you can write them in. It's a good startup. It's a good startup. And this is a textbook for a course that I'm teaching. Yeah. Yeah. About um, doing your stories, how to write your stories. It's a beginning. I'll be starting from home language and honoring the Creoles. I think I saw another thing for Marley's. Okay. Margaret Solomon said, back to the gardening. Yes, gardening is very therapeutic. Yes. That's the unshared with you guys. And for many of us, it is so. I have my own story about gardening, but today is not my, my day. Today is Dion day. Yes. So... Diane, thank you so much for coming by. I truly appreciate it. Thank you a lot. Don't forget, press that button. I don't know what the button is, where you find the button. 
Yes. And have a great week. I'm going to go to work now. Um, so we'll talk soon. 